Hello and welcome to today's lesson. We're going to be covering topics under the standard 3.3 in 6th grade and topics under the study island lesson coordinate system. So today we're basically going to be looking at how to plot points on an x and y axis which is kind of like battleship and then also how to draw shapes on a coordinate plane. So you're going to need to know your shape names also. So as always, please make sure that you are taking notes. If I go too fast, just pause and rewind so that you can get those notes copied down and stay caught up. And then you'll have those to refer to when you are trying to try these problems on your own. And then you can also pause at the beginning of the question, show, work the problem out yourself, make sure you're showing all of your work, and then watch the video to see if you got the problem right or if you got the problem wrong. And if you got it wrong, then you know what areas you need to work on, so which is a great thing. So I'm so glad that you are joining us today, and let's go ahead and take some notes. So first we're going to look at what the coordinate system is, what the names of all the different parts are, and how you graph points on the coordinate system. So a coordinate system is an x and y axis. The x axis is always your horizontal axis, and the y axis is always your vertical axis. Often in problems, they label these axes to help you identify which one is it which in case you forget. This point here is called the origin where they cross. Numbers uh, go up from zero to the right on the x-axis and down from zero on the left on the x-axis. And then the same on the y. As you go up, they're going to go positive numbers up from zero. And as you go down, they're going to be negative numbers down from zero on the y-axis. And so the point of the origin is zero, zero. Then all of the other points that we do is always the x-coordinate first and then the y-coordinate. This first coordinate is going to tell us which direction to move left or right, depending if it's positive or negative. And then the y is going to be, tell us what, which direction to move up or down, depending if it's positive or negative. So for example, negative 5, 3, negative 5 means you're going to move 5 to the left. And then positive 3 tells you you're going to move up 3, and that's where you're going to put your final points. So let's go ahead and look at some examples. So this problem here, they give us a whole bunch of points, and they want to know which one of these points has a y value of 2 and an x value of 7. So they didn't write it as a coordinate pair. They just told it to you in words. If I were to write this as a coordinate pair, it would be 7, 2, because when you write a coordinate pair, the x value is always first. So if I look at the x value, and here they labeled the x-axis for us, and that's going to be 7. So on the x-axis, I'm going to go over to positive 7, which is right here. And then it tells us the value of y is 2. So that means I'm going to go up 2, and that puts me right at the letter x. So my final answer is going to be x, which is choice C. This question, they put it in co coordinate form. So the first coordinate is negative 2, and that's always my x-coordinate. So I'm going to go on the x-axis. I'm going to go over to negative 2. And then my second number is the y-axis, so it's up and down. It's positive 7, so that means I'm going to go up 7. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That puts me right at the letter V, that point V. So that's going to be my final answer, which is choice D. Here, it's the other way around. They tell us which coordinate to look at, so it's going to be coordinate B. And they ask us, what is the coordinates of point B. So the coordinates is always x and then y. So on my x-axis, B is at 14. And then on my y-axis, B is at 2. And so my coordinate here is going to be 14, 2, which is choice B. Here they give us the coordinates negative 7, negative 4. So it's always x and then y, and you can feel free to copy that down and label it so you can keep track of that. So that means on my x-axis, I'm going to go over to negative 7, which is going to be right here. 
And then the y coordinate is negative 4, so that means I'm going to go down 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. k here is at negative 7, negative 4. So k, point k is going to be my final answer, which is choice C. Now we're going to look at drawing shapes using on the coordinate plane. So the, diff the corners or vertices of the shapes are going to be at certain coordinates. So let's just review real quick the different names of different polygons. So if it has a polygon with three sides as a triangle, four sides as a quadrilateral, five sides as a pentagon, six sides as a hexagon, seven sides as a heptagon, eight sides as an octagon, nine sides as a nonagon, and ten sides as a decagon. So you're going to need to know those vocabulary words to be successful in these problems. You're also going to need to know the characteristics of different quadrilaterals. So quadrilaterals are four-sided polygons. However, if we know that all four sides are congruent and all four angles are a right angle or 90 degrees, we know that's going to be a square. And we also know that rectangles have opposite congruent sides and four right angles or four 90 degree angles. And so that's going to help us to draw rectangles. We know that a rhombus has four equal sides, but those angles aren't right angles like in a square. The, we just know that the opposite angles are congruent. And so knowing those characteristics of a rhombus is going to help us out in the next problems. The parallelogram is this one here, and the characteristics that we need to know there is that opposite sides are congruent and opposite angles are congruent, and it kind of looks like a slanted rectangle. And then the last quadrilateral that we need to know characteristics about is a trapezoid. A trapezoid is has one pair of parallel lines, and then the other two sides connect those parallel lines, but they are not parallel themselves. If they were, the two sets of parallel lines is a parallelogram. One set is a trapezoid. So those characteristics are what you're going to need to study also to be successful in the questions following. Then the last set of shapes that we need to know are the different types of triangles. So if you have a triangle, you can name it by its sides or you can name it by its angles. So if you have three sides that are all exactly the same, that's going to be an equilateral triangle. If you have a triangle that has two sides that are the same, that's going to be an isosceles triangle. And if you know that you have a triangle where all the sides are different, you're going to have a scalene triangle. And then you can also look at them by their angles. So there's each triangle you can name two different ways. You can use a side classification and you can use an angle classification. So if you have an obtuse triangle, that means you have one angle that's greater than 90 degrees. If you have an acute triangle, that means every angle is less than 90 degrees. And if you have a right triangle, that means you have one angle that's exactly equal to 90 degrees. So knowing all those names of shapes, let's look at this coordinate. So you might, in order to answer this down, you can pull out graph paper, and you should have graph paper on your OCCT in April. And if you're not given it, just raise your hand and ask. It's something that should be supplied to you. And you can actually draw an X and Y axis and plot these points if it helps you to see it. So we need to know what polygon has the following vertices. And remember, vertices are the corners. So the first coordinate is 1, 1. So that means I'm going to go on my x-axis to 1 and go up positive 1. So it's going to be this point right here. So I'm going to go ahead and circle that. And then my next coordinate is 1, 8. So I'm going to go on the x-axis to 1 and go up 8. And that's going to be this coordinate right here. My third coordinate is 8, 1. So remember, it's always x and then y in your coordinate. So that means I'm going to go to the x-axis to 8 and then up 1, which is here. And then my last coordinate is 8, 8. So that means I'm going to go on the x-axis to 8 and go up 8. And that's going to be my last corner of my shape. So if I connect those four corners, which if you put this on graph paper, you can do, 
I can see that that makes a square, which is going to be choice C. So here I have the starts of a rectangle and I have four, three of the four corners. I just have to figure out where that fourth corner should go in order to figure, in order to make a rectangle. So I know rectangles opposite sides are congruent. So this right side is three blocks long. So I need my right side or my left side to be three blocks long also. So I'm going to go one, two, three. That means my fourth corner needs to go right here. And you can check it out by counting the sides up and down also. So my top one here, if I draw it in, will be five blocks long. And if I count on the bottom, the bottom is also five blocks long. So it's definitely a rectangle. And then I have to look at what is the coordinates here. So remember, it's always x and then y. The x coordinate here is 2. And the y coordinate here is 7. So my answer is 2, 7, which is choice A. This coordinate here, I'm drawing in a parallelogram. Now, parallelogram is a quadrilateral with two sets of parallel sides and the opposite sides are congruent, so they're the same. So this bottom one here is easier to count because it's not going diagonal like the left here across the block. So this bottom side is one, two, three, four, five blocks in length. So that means my top side also needs to be five blocks in length. So it's one, two, three, four, five. My point's gonna have to go right here and when I draw in the rest of my parallelogram, it looks pretty good. So now I just need to find the coordinates of that point. And I remember it's always x and then y. The x coordinate of this point is 8. The y coordinate of this point is 5. So my final answer is going to be 8, 5, which is choice B. So here I have two corners of a triangle and I need to find the third one so that it creates an isosceles triangle. An isosceles triangle has two sides that are congruent. And that's the congruent symbol. So if I look, if I plot the point 4, 3, I'm going to go over on the x-axis to 4 and then up 3, that would be right here. That's not going to create a triangle where two sides are equal. So it's not going to be A. So I'm going to try B. B, the coordinate is 3, 5. So that means this first number is my X coordinate. So I'm going to go over on the X axis to 3 and then up 5 and that's right here. That's not going to create an isosceles triangle. This side here is going to be much shorter than the other two. So it can't be B. C, I have... 8, 3, so x coordinate is first, and so I go over on the x axis to 8, and then I go up 3, and that puts it right there. And that one, it kind of looks like it could create an isosceles triangle, but if I go ahead and look at it, none of those are exactly the same. So two of them look kind of close, but they're not exactly the same. So it's not going to be C. So I only have D left to check. And you always want to check the last one to make sure you didn't make a mistake. So I go ahead and plot 3, 4. So I go over 3 on the x-axis and then up 4. And it's going to put a point right here. And if I look, that is going to make those two sides exactly the same length. Because it's right in the middle of this bottom side, the, this third vertex. So D is definitely going to be my final answer, 3, 4. So here they give us four, ver four coordinates to look at up here and connect to see what kind of polygon they create. So the first one is X is 2, 5. Remember, it's always your X coordinate and then your Y coordinate. So the 2 is going to be X and the Y is going to be 5. So on my x-axis, I'm going to go over to 2 and up 5, and that's going to be this point. And then I'm going to do 4, 7. So on my x-axis, I'm going to go over 4 and up 7, and that's going to be this point. 
And then I'm going to do my third coordinate, which is 9, 5. So I'm going to go over to 9 on my x-axis and up 5, which is this point. And then for my fourth coordinate, I have 7, 3. So I'm going to go over on my x-axis to 7 and up 3, and that's this point here. So if I connect those four coordinates, it makes a parallelogram because the sides are definitely not all the same, so it can't be C or D, and it doesn't have 90 degree angle, so it can't be a rectangle. So my final answer is A. Thank you for joining us today, and I hope you learned something new.